Hey guys, it's Roderick. I'm here with Rise of the Powers of X, number two. Okay, this is the issue we have been waiting for. This is the comic book that has made all of this Fall of X really, really worth it. This is the issue to buy if you want to understand how we got here and kind of the roadmap of where we're going, right? Because it ties in, you know, House of Powers of X, you know, what's happening, Rise of X, Dead X-Men, Immortal X-Men. This is the issue to go out and buy because it's going to make everything a lot easier to explain. It kind of gives us a roadmap of what's going to happen. But of course, we know there are going to be some twists along the way. But this issue kind of lays just about everything out. There's one question that still kind of remains because this issue debunked my previous um, manifold theory, right? So now that we now that we know that there is communication between Xavier and Rachel in a white hot room, what role is Manifold going to play, right? Like, what is how exactly is that going to work out? So that's the only really last part of the plan that we really don't know what that twist is going to be, right? Because we don't know what's going to happen or what the what part Manifold is going to play. But everything else seems to be kind of laid out, right? We got the Tony Stark plan. We have Polaris' plan has already been executed. Wolverine is going after Sinister. You know, we have the Dead X-Men plan. We got Xavier's plan. And the, the only other part that we don't know specifically how it's going to turn out is what's going to happen with Jean in the White Hot Room. But we know that Mother is going to Mother. She's going to give us an entrance for the gods. And she is going to give us a battle of the lifetime based upon the, what was that? The, I think that was the May or April solicitations that just came out that had Jean Grey like with the fire. So we know it's going to be what fire anyway. So we're not really concluding that as a we don't know what's going to happen. We know Mother is going to show up and Jean Grey is going to once again have to remind the girls, especially those Scarlet Witch chicks who like to jump in and out of chats throwing, th you know, throwing darts and throwing rocks at Jean, but she's going to remind you why she is Jean Elaine Gray, Elaine Gray, the Omega of all Omegas. So, that being said, let's get into it, okay? So, what we start off with is a voiceover with Enigma, and what he's doing is he's in, he, he is operating outside of time and space, but now he is peeking into time, right? And we first see him watching Moira 20 minutes before her gift manifests. And what he's saying is that in her 10th life, she's gonna think that she's tried everything, she's done everything, but he's gonna give her another option, right? But he's not gonna give her that option now, 20 minutes before her, gifts, before her gift manifests. He is going to give her that option later on, but we don't, at this time we're reading it, we don't know when, right? Then he moves forward in time to Jean Grey, hurtling through space. She's in that shuttle as the iconic moment in which the uh, Phoenix Force manifests. And he says that Jean Grey is falling as a part of her that eats stars and dominions steps closer, right? So this is crucial. We now know that Moira is integral to this plan, right? Because without Moira, he could not have reached dominionhood because he needed more. He needed the sinister, one of his clones, to find Moira and create Moira engines, which gives, which gave them a very large amount of time for all the different clones to try to reach dominionhood, right? We know Jean is, is integral to the plan because Jean and the Phoenix Force has been established as one thing, and the thing that kills the minions is the Phoenix Force. So we now know that Jean is integral to the plan. Then we find out Cyclops is falling through the sky. Remember when Cyclops and Havoc or Alex are falling through the sky off the plane, his, his gifts manifest. Then he says, you know, then he goes further in time in Cyclops' life to see Cyclops in Orcus Jail, where he's waiting and, and hoping and wishing that Jean Grey is going to save him. But he goes, but, but what he does not know is that Jean is dying along with the Phoenix Force in the White Hot Room. So we now know that somehow Scott is going to be integral to this. And then we get to Xavier, right? Which is pretty much what the our writers had said, that Scott, Jean, Cyclops, Xavier were going to be integral to this final battle with, like, with, at the end of Fall of X, right? So he goes to, he goes to Xavier, fighting with his um, stepbrother, Kate Marco, a.k.a. Juggernaut, just to find out how to get under Xavier's skin by listening to the insults that Kane hurls at him. But then he moves forward. He sees Xavier looking through the uh, Moira engines. He sees Xavier going back to Krakoa, 
but he can't find Xavier right now. Now he knows something's up because he's searching through time and cannot find exactly where Xavier is right now, right? Now we go to No Place X, right? Now, if you've been reading Dead X-Men or you haven't been reading Dead X-Men, go to my Dead X-Men uh, review and this will kind of give you the, the specifics of what is actually occurring here right now in Rise of Powers of X. Because we find out that Dead X-Men is taking place a, simultaneously as this issue is progressing, right? So Rachel's in there. She's like, you know what? Enigma can't really, you know, we can't hide forever from Enigma. This is a really risky thing. And then, child, they got Mother Righteous in a bubble. We're like, wait a minute, is a Mother Righteous like supposed to be in a white hot room? So we find out then, we get a data page. And what we see is, is that we see No Place X and the white hot room are outside time and space. What we then see is a straight diagonal between the white hot room to Mora's lives, the point at which her, life, her powers come to fruition or activate, and that's being blocked by what's called Arachno Sentinels, which has been placed by Enigma to stop anyone from actually going and intercepting, you know, directly when Mora's powers activate. Then we get another line that shows the Moira engines and all the different times and attempts and sinisters, Mother Righteous, Stellar Orbis, all try to reach Dominionhood, right? So what they decided to do is because they can't directly go back to that, that point, because they don't know if what Moira told them is true, they need to go back. They went decided they're going to go back to the Moira engine section, find a time when Moira was not a robot, get the information from her mind so they know exactly what point to go back to to try to avoid the Arachno Sentinels, which is why we have the dead X-Men, because that's the team that's actually gathering the information. We're all caught up? Awesome space, right? So, Mother Righteous is in the bubble, okay? And Doug is not really feeling Mother Righteous, right? He is disgusted by the whole sense of Mother Righteous, which kind of makes sense later on when we get to the big gimme gotcha of this episode, right? And then Xavier is like, Doug is like, I don't understand why we just don't go back and shoot her in the head. And while she was in the while she's in the delivery ward, and Xavier never really gives us an answer, right? Because if you just go back in time and kill her as her baby, then why not do that? And he, he kind of plays like there, like there's some things we just won't do, but we know that you're going back in time to kill, you know, a baby Moira, right? Or a, a teenage Moira or an adult Moira. So killing Moira when she's a baby, like why are we trying to throw lines? Why is this important? Because then the book will be over in like two pages, right? Then all you have to do is just go back in time to the first time she's born and kill her mother or kill her, then it's over, right? But then we wouldn't have three months of comic books to read, right? So I don't really like the explanation they gave us. This is a huge plot hole, but girl, we're just going to go with it because you know how the X-Men do. They like to play in our face, drag shit out, give us some flimsy explanations for shit that can be solved in day one as opposed to three months, right? So then Rachel's like, look, the dead egg, that dead eggs are ready, right? And then Mother Righteous is continually trying to convince her way out this bubble. And Doug is like, I'm not feeling you. I'm not, you know, fuck with you. I know you're lying. I know you're trash, whatever. So then Rachel's like, well, how are things going in the white hot room? So this series, this is our first gimme gotcha, right? So somehow, parentheses, X-Men Forever, issues one through three, they can't, they are communicating. So the Mother Righteous that's in the bubble is the real Mother Righteous. And then her human puppet, I, call, I think they call it a homo nucleus or whatever, is still in a white hot room. So they're using the Mother Righteous in the bubble to communicate with the mutants in the white hot room. How they found this out, how they got this done, how they captured Mother Righteous, we don't know. That's what we're supposed to find out in a few weeks starting at X-Men Forever, but I guess that's what the wait is for. So then, anyway, then all of a sudden, Mother Righteous goes, not good. You think? You know why? Because Mother Jean, Dre, Jean Grey is, like, dying, and she is, like, bleeding out. Elixir has healed her. She's, like, still comatose, just repeating now and forever, over and over and over again, and the white hot room is growing darker and darker and darker, and there's only one beam of light, and we see Hope kind of looking, checking. I mean, everyone is just despondent, right? Because it's dark in the white hot room. It's sad. Everyone is grieving because Jean is dying and whatever. And Hope decides, Hope creates a gun and puts it up to like Mother Righteous's face, a little, the puppet Mother Righteous. And it's like, okay, girl, we got our team. Let's get this done, right? Now, let's insert my theory here. 
I think hope is going to die. I think that hope is the last piece and fragment of untainted Phoenix Force that exists in the universe. That whether or not that is because Jean during her last death sent hope to the earth so to revitalize the human population and use a piece of the Phoenix Force to do it, or whether or not that's because in Immortal X-Men number 17, when Psychic Jean was seeing Body Jean and she touches Hope and she had a piece of the Phoenix Force and then Hope used that to kind of dispel the fake uh, apocalypse and all those characters, I think Hope is going to be the key. Because I remember the, um, the in the issue, the fake apocalypse says to Hope, you are the Chapli in which all eternity will, will run, right? So Hope, I think, is going to have to sacrifice herself for Jean to come back to life for the X-Men to actually defeat Enigma. This is my theory. Clearly, I was wrong with the Manifold thing, but I think that's the fun part of reading comics, right? You kind of come up with your theories and see how it goes. So anywho, when Doug is like, so tell me why you think that's going wrong, he, she's like, nonchalantly, well, I just tried to sacrifice the Phoenix Force to reach Dominionhood. And Doug is just pissed, right? And I'm just like, Doug, why are you so wild up? Why are you so tight, right? So then anyway, Enigma still is looking for Xavier, so he moves forward in time. So then he moves forward in time to see where happens, and he finds and he realizes that Xavier has created a place out of no place, right? And outside of time and space, so then he sends the Arachno Sentinels to go to go attack the No Place tumor, right? So they're in force. So then, and that after that, while that's happening, Rasputin figures out that Rachel doesn't know what Xavier's true plan is. And then we get this kind of dribble with Xavier feeling guilty for having listened to Moira and creating the Krakoan Age and setting the mutants on the on this path. And this is the way that things are going to work out. And I'm just kind of like, well, okay. Let's assume that's true, right? What is going to, do you know what's going to replace the Krakoan Age? Do you know what time, what this timeline is going to be like now? Do you know what you're placing in place or what this next life, this next universe is going to be? Or are you just willy-nilly doing things? Like, that's my big question, right? Okay, assuming that Gene and Xavier, you know, you know they destroy Enigma, they stop Mora, what's going to replace this Krakoan Age? Like, what is this world going to look like? Is this going to be a world where everybody remembers the Krakoan Age? Or is it going to be a world where they just stop Enigma and, and more is dead? I don't want a hard reset. I know there are a lot of people, and I really should do a video about why people don't like the Krakoan Age, because it's quite interesting, but not really surprising. But I don't want a hard reset back to the mansion, right? I want them to decide to go back to the mansion on their own with the knowledge and experiences of what they've experienced in the Krakoan Age. I just don't want like a Heroes Reborn blip or like this, like a whole thing where they forget and then everything that's been, in, everything we've learned and seen and, and done is like, okay, it's a hard reset. I don't want a hard reset. I really, really don't. But I don't own Marvel. I don't write for Marvel. I don't own Marvel stock. So it is what it is, right? Anyway, then we get an explosion. Enigma has found them. It's the Arachno Sentinels. They're going crazy. They're trying to find, you know, trying to stop it. You know, Rachel's like, Rachel's like, we need more time. The team is still out there. Dead X-Men, number issues number one. It's still out there, whatever. Rasputin jumps through a portal to try to fight the Sentinels. And then we see Doug. Doug is like, well, I can create another tendril and swing us all back. And then all of a sudden, he says, oh, I to the, saw the two psychics having a conversation. I was going to eavesdrop, but that would have revealed what else I dropped in his clone, turned the head with the Sinister Diamond. God damn it, Doug is a fucking Sinister clone. Like, Sinister is literally like the comic book version of Chlamydia, like you just, or like gonorrhea or herpes or some horrible STD you just can't shake. And every time you think you've gotten rid of it, here comes some more drip, 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 outbreak, 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 some other thing. And I'm just, it's exhausting almost, right? Like Sinister is an okay character, but for Sinister to take up so much space in this whole thing, like is really, I don't know. I'm just, I'm tired, you know what I'm saying? Like, so now we know that Doug is a Sinister clone, right? The real Doug is still in the pit. Sinister is pulling the puppets from wherever, even though we thought in Immortal X-Men, we entered Sinister's mind and saw that everything was okay, we know that's not the case because Doug is really a Sinister clone. And we also know from the solicitations, there's gonna be a huge betrayal. 
Where's that betrayal gonna come from? The fucking sinister clone of Doug. So we, so, I, I, I don't know. Like, again, this better pay off to be something good. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna say I like it. I'm not gonna say I don't like it. The payoff of having a Doug sinister clone and the, and the reveal right now better fucking pay off or otherwise I'm gonna be pissed. So anyway, Doug creates a tendril. Rasputin kills the Sentinels. She gets back in the she gets back in the uh, tumor. Rachel announces that the team got the information. Dead X Men issue number one, end of issue, right? And now Xavier leaves to talk to Amora, aka Kill Mora, right? And then we say Enigma says, "Okay, it's time," right? So now he goes to the X Men invasion that's supposed to be happening very soon to the very end. Finds Mora, Orcus is losing, you know, everyone, the, the AI is losing, Nimrod's there, and he says to Mora, they don't win, I do, right? Writes it in the sky. And she goes, so? And he goes, let's talk. So now we see that Enigma is going to offer, make the offer to Mora that he's been talking about, make, that he's been talking about, right? What is this offer? We don't know. What does this do? We don't know. But if you read that x -Men, you know there's another Moira that's trying something to do something else. So we don't know how this all connects, but it's interesting. The stakes are high. We're bought in. This Doug thing, I'm just going to turn that over to Jesus because that's so effing annoying. And I'm just like, ah. But all in all, 10 out of, you know, I'm going to take point two points off of the Doug thing. So I give it a 9.8 out of 10. Still a fantastic issue all the way around. Go buy it and go buy it. Watch my Dead X-Men video. Let me know what you think. Like, cause I saw a lot of people weren't really liking or feeling this issue. So I'm really interested to know what people thought, what people think, but I think it's good. So don't forget to like, don't forget to comment. Don't forget to subscribe, drop down in the comments and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.